Some UFO incidents just seem to defy explanation. Eyewitnesses see one thing, and the officials responsible for investigating the phenomenon often see something very different. Here are some bizarre details about UFO sightings that don't add up. Kenneth Arnold's June 24, 1947 sighting over Mount Rainier is considered the birth of the modern UFO era. According to reports on the UFO wave of 1947, the nine objects he saw flew in a V formation, though each lower than the one before, covering five miles while he watched. Arnold is quoted as saying that they looked like a saucer if you skip it across the water. It was not their shape, but their movement. The objects were rounded in the front, pointed towards the back, like tailless horseshoe crabs. One explanation was meteors, albeit exhibiting behavior that would make them the strangest meteors ever. The Air Force called it a mirage. Dr. Alan Hynek, an astronomer and professor employed by Project Blue Book, noted that Arnold was not consistent in his estimates of the object's distance or size. It might simply have been planes or atmospheric effects. The skeptics could really only agree about one thing, that it wasn't aliens. The military was already on high alert when radar picked up unidentified objects 120 miles west of Los Angeles on February 24, 1944. Expecting a threat, the military fired upon the objects. However, the mystery objects were indifferent to the assault of 1,440 anti-aircraft rounds. The one-sided battle killed five people on the ground through traffic accidents and heart attacks. Secretary of the Navy Frank Knox said the next morning that there was no evidence of planes, labeling it a false alarm. But he didn't help matters when he followed this up by saying that vital industries ought to move inland in case this was an attack. After speaking to witnesses, local army commanders ruled that there had been between one and five unidentified objects in the sky. They guessed that it was either commercial planes in the hands of enemies or light planes launched from Japanese submarines. Some said they saw a slow-moving silver disk. This was bolstered by a photograph of searchlights all fixed on a strange object. However, newspapers at the time tended to retouch photos to improve contrast. The object is far less evident in the unretouched picture. There have been countless UFO-related incidents over the years, but not many have caused a minor league baseball team to change its name and mascot. This particular encounter has the significant honor of being regarded as the first filmed evidence of UFOs. The scientific study of unidentified flying objects, also known as the Condon Report, described how, during August of 1950, Nick Mariana, the general manager of Great Falls, Montana baseball team The Electrics, witnessed two bright objects moving slowly through the sky. As I looked up, I saw two silvery objects moving swiftly out of the northwest. They appeared to be moving directly south. He later described them in the Blue Book report as like two new dimes in the sky. Mariana had a film camera in his car, and he maintained that he recorded around 30 seconds of footage of the spinning objects. Mariana thought that they took off at around 400 miles an hour. When the Air Force looked at the footage, they knocked this down to 200 miles an hour. Once the Air Force returned the film, 30 frames that best showed the objects had been removed and they explain the film as reflections of two F-94 jet fighters that were in the area. The head of the Project Blue Book disagreed, and he also discounted birds, balloons, and meteors. Regardless of the actual origins of the crafts, Mariana changed the Great Falls Electrics to the Voyagers, and they adopted a baseball-loving alien as their mascot. On October 27, 1954, in Tuscany, 10,000 stadium fans watching a soccer match went silent. Then they began to scream. The players on the pitch suddenly stopped playing to stare. One of the players recalled, It was something that looked like an egg that was moving slowly. Also, there was some glitter coming down from the sky, silver glitter. The object remained for 15 minutes and dropped silver flakes of a stringy-type substance. This substance is an established UFO phenomenon called angel hair. A spectrographic analysis showed that it contains boron, silicon, calcium, and magnesium. But that did little to explain what it was. The skeptical explanation is that these thousands of people misidentified meteors. The metallic string? Only spider webs, though spiders do not typically use boron or silicon when spinning. When this theory was ridiculed, the Skeptic Society, CICAP, claimed that the Air Force had been performing exercises that day. Apparently, they were dropping a radar countermeasure called chaff in the area. Of course, this doesn't satisfy the descriptions of the thousands who witnessed the object. Chad Underwood is the U.S. Navy pilot that filmed the now-famous Tic Tac UFO with his infrared camera on his F-A-18 Super Hornet on November 10, 2004. The Tic Tac was one of a group of slow-moving objects seen 10 miles off San Clemente Island. 
At 28,000 feet, they were too high and fast to be birds and too slow to be an aircraft. Then they exhibited ballistic missile characteristics and plummeting from 60,000 feet to 50 feet above the Pacific Ocean without creating a single sonic boom. Underwood's footage shows the 40-foot-long white object hovering between 15,000 and 24,000 feet without detectable propulsion, even when it sharply banks left. When he screened it for other pilots later, there weren't many skeptics, but they all did want to fly it themselves. The flying saucer-like objects seen above the United Terminals Concourse C in November 2006 stayed long enough to be seen by pilots, airline management, and mechanics, people who know what an airplane looks like and can identify aerial phenomena. Witnesses were inconsistent in their description, saying it was 6 to 24 feet in diameter, spinning, or stationary. However, they all agreed that it was gray and silent and that it shot off into the clouds, leaving a circular hole in them. The Federal Aviation Administration and United Airlines expressed no interest in investigating. Center for US UFO Studies Scientific Director Mark Rodegear was appalled, saying, It's an unknown object over a hair, and it's seen by official personnel, and does United or the FAA take it seriously? How can you not worry about something hovering over an airport after 9-11? Dr. Mark Hammergren, an astronomer at Adler Planetarium, suggested that it was simply a weather condition called a hole-punch cloud, which doesn't explain the hovering object. Once the Chicago Tribune filed a Freedom of Information Act request, the FAA went from saying that they had no information to echoing claims of a weather phenomenon. An FAA spokeswoman said, When the lights shine up into the clouds, sometimes you can see funny things. On January 8, 2008, residents of Stephenville, Texas, including a police officer and a pilot, saw a UFO, quote, bigger than a Walmart. It hovered for about five minutes before zipping into the sky. Pilot Steve Allen claimed it sped away at 3,000 miles an hour, followed by fighter jets. He said, The jets looked like they were chasing the lights, and the lights seemed to be toying with them. A former Air Force navigation specialist witnessed the objects and said its lights were, quote, the reddest things I'd ever seen in the sky. A reporter then called Major Carl Lewis of the 301st Fighter Wing, who denied that they had anything flying that night. Personnel from other bases said the same. Twelve days later, the military did a 180, putting out a press release reading in part, 10 F-16s from the 457th Fighter Squadron were performing training operations from 6 to 8 p.m. on January 8th. Lewis explained that there had been an internal communications problem that prevented the military from admitting this any sooner. When further pressed to release details of what the planes were doing, he said, quote, We fly like we fight. What we've got here is failure to communicate. In 1941, Pastor William Huffman of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, was called by the sheriff to help the victims of a plane crash. It was a serious crash when he arrived, but it was far from an airplane. His granddaughter, Charlotte Mann, said in 2021, There was a round silver disc that was broken open, and there were metallic shards in the field that had set fire to the field. The eyewitnesses also discovered three creatures. By the time Huffman arrived, two had already died. The pastor did not feel comfortable administering last rites. Cape Girardeau UFO researcher Michael Huntington said that the Army Air Corps arrived, took all the evidence it could, including photographs of men holding the alien bodies, and swore everyone's secrecy, a command Huffman obeyed until he was on his deathbed. The FBI went contacted would only say that they were unable to identify records responsive to the request. The Hudson Valley UFO flap occurred between 1982 and 1986 and involved sightings of one or more football field-sized V-shaped objects drifting across the sky. The UFOs caused a traffic jam on I-84 and over 5,000 residents witnessed it. Alan Hynek once again studied the Hudson Valley sightings and pronounced that this was genuinely unidentified. It loosened his deeply held skepticism, eventually leading him to co-author the book Night Siege, the Hudson Valley UFO sightings. On August 25, 1984, officials declared that it was a hoax caused by six people flying ultralight aircraft in a tight formation. This was not a satisfying answer. The objects were solid enough to block the stars, far too consistent to be disconnected, too large to be a contingent of ultralights, and too silent. Dr. Hynek would have debunked the sightings immediately if the answer were so simple. Were the aerial stunts performed by sophisticated pranksters? are UFOs of unknown origin. Regardless of the true nature of the sightings, the town of Pinebush has started an annual fair in honor of the event. On July 24, 1948, a pilot and co-pilot flying an Eastern Airlines DC-3 from Houston to Atlanta spotted a strange object in the sky. Though there were 20 passengers, 19 of them were asleep. The pilot described the object seen 20 miles outside Montgomery, Alabama. It was clear there were no wings present, that it was powered by some jet or other type of power, shooting flame from the rear some 50 feet. There were two rows of windows, which indicate an upper and lower deck, and from inside these windows, a very bright light was glowing. The pilot saw it only 10 seconds before it disappeared behind the clouds. Both Boeing aircraft and the Army made statements that it wasn't one of theirs. 
Thomas Mantell, a 25-year-old Kentucky Air National Guard pilot with more than 2,000 hours in the air, has the dubious distinction of being the first person killed by a UFO on January 7, 1948. Colonel Guy Hicks, the base commander, described the object as about one-fourth the size of the full moon and said it hovered completely still for over an hour. Another observer stated that it came near to the ground before climbing quickly back to 10,000 feet and it flew at more than 500 miles an hour. Mantell and two others chased the UFO. His wingmen gave up at 22 1,500 feet. Over the objections of the other pilots, Mantell kept climbing in pursuit. Once he passed 25,000 feet, he blacked out and the plane spiraled. Historian David Jacobs marked this as the turning point. The fact that a person actually died while interacting with the UFO dramatically increased people's concern about the mysterious crafts. Theories were that it was a Soviet missile or that an alien craft had shot Mantell down when he got too close. People variously claimed that his body was bullet riddled or missing and that what was left of his plane was radioactive. Some have claimed that he was mistakenly chasing Venus. They would go on to say that Mantell died chasing an object that would have been unknown to him at the time, a skyhook balloon, which at that point was still very top secret. 13,500 people in Belgium admitted to having seen flying objects between November 1989 and April 1990. In one November incident, 30 people, including three unrelated pairs of police officers, all witnessed the same object. One police dispatcher said, quote, it made no noise, but joked that it might be Santa Claus. This sighting was ultimately reported as a Soviet satellite breaking up in the atmosphere. However, skeptic Brian Dunning said this same sighting was a helicopter. The sightings tapered off after a March 30th, 1990 incident in which two Belgian Air Force F-16s chased the objects. In that incident, the pilots tried to give chase, but it became impossible when the targets began exhibiting unusual behavior like jumping huge distances in seconds and accelerating beyond human capacity. The Belgians asked the UK Ministry of Defense to investigate, but the ministry stopped once it was clear that the objects were not a threat. The most famous photo of the sighting, the so-called Petit Richard picture, was a hoax. One of the hoaxers has even joked that they were able to trick everyone with a piece of polystyrene. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.